to strengthen us, to inspire us, to steer us up, to stand in the gap, to persevere in prayer, and to prevail in prayer this hour in Jesus' name. Lord, we are counting on you according to your word that where two or three are gathered in your name, that right in their midst you will be. As we have gathered here physically in person, and as our people that are also joining us in other churches in person, are also streaming live with us, we are praying that you give us the evidence of your presence with the release of your spirit anointing upon us to persevere and prevail in prayers in Jesus' name. Continue with us, Holy Father. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. We'll be having different sections uh, for this uh, prayers uh, meeting. And the first section is the art section of thanksgiving. We want to give thanks to the Almighty God for what He has done in time past, for all His interventions, all this move the release of power, the grace of God upon the church, the vision that God has given to the leadership of the church uh, to reach out to the world, which is the mandate that Christ gave to every one of us, to every believer in this end time. So we want to bless the name of the Lord and we want to start reading from the book of Psalm 75. Psalm 75 verse 1. He said, Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks unto thee do we give thanks for that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare the name of the lord is near we have called on him in time past and we have recorded outstanding testimonies with respect to the global crusade and we believe that this time around this global crusade coming forth in the philippines the lord god of heaven will visit us one more time and Philippines shall be saved in Jesus' name. His name will be glorified in Jesus' name. But we want to enter his cause with thanksgiving. We want to enter his presence with appreciation to begin to worship him for all he has done in time past. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they have. And what created thou hast, what the Lord thou at what the Lord to receive glory, honor, and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they have, and were created. We give you. All the glory we give you honor we give you all the glory we give you honor honor we give you all the glory we give you honor we give you all the glory we give you Honor, take glory, Father, take glory, Son, take glory, Holy Ghost, now forever, now forevermore, take glory, Father, take glory, Son, take glory, Holy Ghost, now forevermore. You know, we are giving thanks to God for the vision that God has given to the leadership of this church, especially to our general superintendent, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumoy. In this end time, 
and at this age of ease for that vision to reach out to the world a dying world we want to give glory to god because he is a merciful god because he has not left this generation without a shepherd without an apostle with that because he has no pleasure in the death of any sinner and that's why we want to give thanks to god because the work of redemption is getting is not just limited to one nation but it's for the whole world and he has raised up his servant he has raised up his servant so the first thanksgiving is to give thanks to god let's appreciate him for the work of redemption let's thank god for the vision he has given to the leadership of our church to embark on this mandate of reaching to the whole world let's thank god for the vision the lively vision that god has given to our pastor let's give him glory let's say father we thank you for the vision of the power to reach out to the global world thank you father thank you son thank you holy ghost we appreciate you for how you have released this vision to touch the world we are grateful we are grateful we are grateful yes jesus died for the whole world don't forget he didn't just die for one continent he died for the whole world i said go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature and now god has given that vision to our pastor let's appreciate him let's thank god for the willingness that god has given to our pastor as well to uh, comply to comply to comply to comply to this vision like paul said but when it pleased my god who separated me from my mother's womb to reveal his son in me that i might preach him among the hidden among the gentiles he said immediately i confirm not with flesh and blood let's thank god for the grace that god has given to our leader to also comply to comply to the to 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 to, to, to these beatings of global mandate let's appreciate him for the grace let's appreciate him for the leadership let's thank God for the past crusades crusades in Africa crusades outside Africa let's appreciate him for the souls that have come into the kingdom we must not take anything for granted let's thank God let's appreciate him the more we give thanks for the soul that we that came into the kingdom the more we can get more from him let's thank God and let's thank him because all souls belong to him all souls belong to him let's appreciate him for the souls that have come into the kingdom as a result of this crusade let's thank God let's thank God for those that have had personal encounter with Christ as a result of the past crusade he the various states let's appreciate him for the inter for the backsliders that have been restored for the restoration of backsliders for the salvation of sinners let's appreciate his holy name let's give him glory let's appreciate him let's give him glory he is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be exalted he is worthy to be magnified let's adore his holy name for the soul that have come into the kingdom let's give him glory let's begin to thank god for the utterances that god has given to his servant you know it's not easy <laughs> you prepare someone once for day one for day two for day three for day four for day five for day six and you are doing that on regular monthly basis regularly let's thank god for the whole transit ah, for the whole transit that god has given to his servant let's appreciate him he is worthy to be praised he thank him let's thank him let's thank him for the season word of the hour that god has given to his servant let's begin to appreciate him our god is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be exalted he is worthy to be magnified there's not to be compared unto him let's thank him for the divine support the divine support that yeah the, that, that 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 we have received in this global crusade you know it's not easy the financial support no those global crusade cost so much let's appreciate god for the the provisions for the provisions to stage this global crusade let's thank him for the financial provision let's give him glory they say father we are grateful for the financial support for for the for, for for the weather support even for making all things work together for the past crusades let's appreciate his holy name let's give thanks to his holy name our god is worthy to be praised he is worthy to be exalted in jesus precious name we have prayed worship amen at this don't want to worship god you know the church was not existing the life as a church was not existing literally maybe come in a literal way in the philippines ever before god asked uh, our, our original overseer here was commissioned as a missionary to the philippines 
But now he has, he has been sending testimonies. I want to thank God for the hope on doors, for the hope on doors, for making a way into the, into the country of the Philippines, into the country, the nation of the Philippines. Let's thank God for the hope on doors that, that God has made for the church, not just for the church, for the gospel, for the hope on doors. Let's appreciate his holy name. Let's give thanks to the almighty God for opening doors for the perpetration of the, I mean, for, 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 the, for the penetration of the gospel in the Philippines. Let's thank God for the open doors. You know, there are some nations that close their doors and it will, take, it will take divine intervention to have the gospel to penetrate. Let's not take this for granted. Let's appreciate him. Thank you because Jesus, you are the way and you have made the way, oh, for the gospel to penetrate into the nation of the, of the, of the Philippines. We want to appreciate you. We want to adore your name for the open doors. We want to give you glory. We want to give you praise. We want to give you adoration. You are worthy to be praised. We give you glory, Lord. We adore your holy name. In Jesus' name, we worship him. We want to thank God for the forthcoming global crusade. Let's thank God for what God will do. Because he has magnified his word above his name. He said, and I, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw all men unto me. Let's begin to thank you because as we, as we lift him up, as we lift him up through this global crusade in the Philippines, uh, he's going to draw men to himself. Uh, he's going to draw men to himself. Let's begin to appreciate him because he's going to honor his word. Let's begin to give him glory because he's going to draw souls of men to himself. Uh, souls that are afflicted, souls that are under bondage, souls that are under oppression, souls that have been blindfolded by the enemy, souls that are under the grip of sin and under the grip of satanic affliction. Let's begin to thank him because as we lift him up, he's going to honor his name. He said, and I, if I be lifted up, he said, I will draw men, men that are under bondage, I will draw men, men that are afflicted, I will draw men, men that are oppressed, I will draw men, men that have been downcasted, I will draw all Men, different categories of men. I will draw all men to my side. Let's begin to thank him because he's able and more than able to draw the youth, to draw the children to himself, to draw the youth to himself, to draw the younger adults in that place to himself, to draw the men and the women over there to himself. As the name of Christ will be exalted, as the name of Christ will be lifted high in the Philippines through this global crusade. Let's begin to appreciate him because he's able and more than able to draw men. To draw men to himself. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be magnified. He bless the name of the Lord. Worship him. He is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. In Jesus' name we worship him. You are going to sing this song in appreciation to what he is able to do. He is able, abundantly able to deliver and to save our god is able abundantly able to deliver as we pray to him he is able he is able, he is able abundantly able to deliver and to save our God is able abundantly able to deliver as we trust in him and he will do he will save he will liberate he will redeem he will reconcile and set people free drawing down this crusade in jesus name amen now we will be switching to the next section and the next section has to do with publicity god is able and more than able we have thanked him he's more able and more than able to draw people to himself don't forget that it says in the book of Ezekiel, it says, all souls are mine. All souls. Whether they are people that have been downcasted, people that are sinners, people that the community or the society does not reckon with, it says, all souls are mine. And he has no pleasure in the death of any sinner. And that's why at this juncture, we want to trust him that, oh God, through this publicity, that the word of God he said, he said that 
God gave the word. He said, great was the company of them that what? That published it. As this publicity will be going through the nook, nook and cranny of the Philippines, that God will set open doors. There will be open doors for the penetration of the gospel. And the name of Jesus will be exalted. So the person that our, 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 brought, our minister that will be helping us with this is uh, Pastor Williams. will be coming on board now. Take us through this section. Over to you, sir. Let's continue in that same spirit of prayer. A brother has told us in Psalm 68 verse 11 that the Lord gave the word, but great was the company of those that published his word. And publicity has various forms. We want to take that prayer to God this evening concerning the Philippine mission. The Philippine mission, materials have been produced. Uh, flyers have been produced. And also communication gadgets, uh, electronic gadgets, radio system, TV system. The publicity is in such media. I want to commit those publicity media into the hand of God, we want to ask that the Spirit of the Lord will empower the publicity and the word therein concerning the Philippine crusade, global crusade. I want to pray that every media, every medium that is used, electronic, print media, that the Lord will magnify his word. Remember the Lord said, that he has valued his word above his name. You can see the importance that the Lord has placed upon his word. He has valued his word above his own name. And we know the name of the Lord is the Jehovah Jireh, is the Jehovah Rapha, is the Elohim Israel, is the Jehovah Sikenu, is the Jehovah Adonai, is the Almighty God is the beginning and the ending, the everlasting God, the creator of the whole universe. He created you. He created me. There is nothing that was created that was not created by him. And yet, with his awesomeness, with his almighty name, the name above every other name, that at the mention of the name Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow. Yet, he said, I have valued my word above my name which means he has certified his word. His word is A and amen. His word is sure. And when we apply his word, the, his promises upon our lives, it comes through. When we come against the devil, against principalities, against powers of darkness, by that word, remember what David said, that Goliath comes to him with sword, with staff, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. And yet that same Lord said, I have valued my word above my name. So you can imagine if his name is so strong, so powerful, that principalities, powers of darkness cannot withstand his name. Yet he has valued his word above his name. So let's take the print word of God. Let's take the spoken word of God that the people are going to hear in Philippines that that word will not fall to the ground. Concerning, come, let's go see. Come, let's go see what's going on between this period and this period in the month of May. Let's pray that the power of the Lord will be in his word and that no one will come in touch, will come in contact by any means of that word in the publicity material, whether by print media, whether by electronic media, that no one on the internet, no one on the news houses, no one will hear about this program and would not respond because that person will be moved by the power of the Almighty God. And so, Father Lord, we, you have already valued your word above your name. And Lord, we lift up your word this evening, Lord, that everywhere your word is mentioned in the land of Philippines, either through print media, or through electronic media, as many that hear about this gathering of God's people, Lord, Father, we pray that whatever they have planned during this period, 
mighty God in heaven, empower your word to arrest them, that they will come and see what's going on. And I pray as they come, your word will save them. Your word will deliver them. Your word will heal them. Your word will put a testimony, Lord, in every participant in the Alpha Ground, in every participant in Philippines, every participant in the provinces, every province, Lord, that your word will be mentioned, that this program will be mentioned. Mighty God in heaven, we pray that, Lord, they will respond positively in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to look at the word of God. We're still praying on publicity. We're going to look at Colossians chapter 4 in verse 3. We're looking at wider open doors for gospel penetration. Wider open doors for gospel's penetration. Colossians chapter 4, we look at it from verse 3. Colossians 4 verse 3. The Bible says, Without praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I'm also in bonds. Every believer is in bond to speak the mystery of Christ because we have been commissioned, because we have been, you know, commit, it's a commitment for every believer to preach the word of God. And that preaching will open unto us a door of utterance. Let's pray that in our Philippine Global Crusade, that the publicity, God will open a door of utterance for, for the church. We want to pray that that open door, every door that the enemy has closed, our prayer this evening, God will open every door in every heart, in every community, in every family, in every government parastatal, that God will have an open door to the ministers, to the government officials, to those who have their private businesses, to the school community, to every part. Remember, this is a place where Catholicism has taken a greater portion of the population. Sometimes it's even easier to save a Muslim than a Catholic. Want to pray for an open door. Remember, this is a place where, you know, the traditional religion holds sway. It's a place where, you know, uh, principalities and powers of darkness host way. You can hear the testimony of uh, Aru uh, uh, in his uh, missionary there. Want to pray that God will grant unto his church an open door, an open door, without praying also for us, that God will open unto us a door of utterance, that as they knock from house to house, that God will make every indigent to open unto the word of the Lord. And that none of, no one will hear about this meeting, this period, that will not attend. I want to pray for open door in the heart of, every, of, 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 of everybody in that country, whether strangers, whether indigenous, an open door, that God will grant us an open door in their heart, that they will have a schedule, they will have a timetable to attend, and they will plan to attend this program, that the Spirit of God we bring them, and as they come, they will never go back the same. There will be open door. There will be testimony. Testimonies of salvation, testimonies of deliverance from alcoholism, testimony of de deliverance from drug addiction, testimony of deliverance from everything that the enemy has. They've given themselves unto the enemy, that the Lord will set them free. Remember, it is a dangerous thing for somebody to have the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And that is what you know, a religion does to a man. That's what religion does to a woman, just to have the form. They still carry their Bible like you and me. They still attend some places, the culture, house of worship, and yet when they come back, they still maintain their normal, sinful life. We want to pray that God will grant us an open door, an open door, an open door, an open door, so that they will see the difference between being born again and being a Christian. There are, two dif there, is a, there are two differences there. I am born again. Oh, I am a Christian because my name is William, because my name is Paul, because my name is Jesus. I am a Christian because I attend one place. 
you know, on Sunday and on Monday during the week, I do my own thing. I, do, I go my own way. I do the things I want to do. And I come to confess on Sunday morning. I come to confess Sunday evening. A form of religion denying the power thereof. The Bible says from such turn away. We want to turn them unto the Lord in this global crusade. We want to pray for an open door. That God will give our GS. That God will give our region of us here. That God will give all the ministers that will be ministering an open door into the heart of the, 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 these ones. Father Lord, we have asked this evening that you grant us an open door. Lord, we pray you will arrest the heart, you will arrest the attention, you will arrest every purpose of every of the participant, Lord, in that global crusade that, Father, at the end, they will never remain the same. At the end, they will see a difference being a religion, a religious person, and being a believer, and being a child of God. Grant us an open door. All those doors that have been locked by sin, all those locked doors that have been locked, locked by self, all those doors that have been locked by religion, all those doors that have been locked by the enemy, Lord. Father, I pray, we pray this evening that, Lord, there will be an open door. There will be an open door. Empower your word in the mouth of your servant, that as they publicize, Lord, this meeting, Lord, I pray, Father, Lord, that there will be an open door. All those uh, 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 things that they have, they, they have in them, that they continue to deceive them, that continue to make them, Lord, not to accept you as their personal Lord and Savior. This evening, Lord, we are praying down your power, the power of your word upon their life, that as they get to know about this meeting, as they get to hear, maybe a friend tells them, maybe through the radio, maybe through the internet, maybe through the TV, Lord, in whatever way, in whatever medium, Lord, as they get to know about this garden, about this meeting, Lord, by your spirit, you will draw them. Because Christ, you said, and if I be lifted up, right now we are lifting you, Lord Jesus, in the whole country of Philippines. We are lifting you up. You said, if I be lifted up, we are lifting you up this evening, Lord, because you will draw all the people in that nation. The strangers, Lord, you will draw them to you. The Philippines, you will draw them to you. Those in government, you will draw them to you. Those in military, you will draw them to you. The students, you will draw them to you, Lord. The youth, you will draw them. The children, you will draw them. The adult, you will draw them. The seniors, Lord, you will draw them unto you as we lift you up in this gathering in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're going to look at financial support for all publicity logistics. Financial support for all publicity logistics in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by who? By Christ Jesus. We want to lift up, you know, the publicity materials and the logistics. We want to ask for financial support from the Lord this evening. Remember, but my God, our God we serve, shall supply all your need, our need, according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We have made vows to support us. Let's pray that God will bless as many that have made vow to support the program in Philippines. And those who have given, that the Lord will bless them the more so that they can also give. And those who have not been able to give, make good their vow unto the Lord concerning this uh, meeting. We want to ask that the Lord will you know, provide for all that have made vow and that they will also quickly pay so that there will be no lack in the house of God concerning the, material, the publicity material. I want to ask that God will, will, will bless us richly so that we will not lack in the printing of the publicity material and in the organizing of the publicity material. I want to pray for great provision, miraculous provision for the publicity of these great events. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we want to thank you for as many that have made their vows in various states in this nation. Father, in this region, we pray that, Lord, you will bless up your people and that they will give. And, Father, Lord, as we give, there will be no lack, Lord. We will, Father, be able to reach out unto the people and to let them know about this great gathering, about your your presence that's going to be within this period, Lord.
Father, we pray that as many that have made this vow, Lord, remind them, and not only remind them, provide for them so that they can also, Lord, make do the vow we, we have all made. And we pray that, Lord, we will not lack you. will bless us as we make do our vows in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We want to look at uh, the book of Psalm 110, verse 3, as we pray about the publicity materials, about the personnel that will be involved in the publicity and the publicity logistics. Psalm 110, verse 3. Psalm 110, look at it from verse 3. The Bible says, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, in the beauties of holiness, from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy mouth. Thy people shall be willing. Remember, it is people, it are brethren, that are going to publicize, you know, this great gathering of God's people. I want to pray that the people will be willing, that they will come out en masse to publicize this great event of what the Lord is about to do in Philippines. I want to pray there will be willingness, there will be unity, there will be, you know, that willingness, you know, to, for the people to come together and to also to go out to publicize the word of the living God. Remember in Psalm 68 verse 11, the Lord gave his word and great, great, that was many, that those that publish the word of the Lord. Let's pray for willingness in the heart of the brethren. In the heart, you know, it's only our pastor that is there. But we want to pray that as many that are congregating with him, you know, that there will be willingness to publicize. And you know, other uh, ministers are involved. We want to pray on their own part and in their membership that there will be willingness to publicize this great event of what the Lord is about to do. It's about to transform not just the people. It's about to transform a nation. A nation that do know their God shall prosper. I want to pray that God will touch the hearts of the brethren there, that they will come out en masse to publicize the great event of the gathering of God's people. I want to publicize the power of God that is going to come down mightily to save, to deliver, to heal, and to destroy every workings or parts of darkness, to set free at liberty those who are bruised, to strengthen those who are in the faith. I want to pray that no one will draw back, no one will get discouraged, no one will get sick. The Lord, anyone that is sick this time, will lift them up before the throne of grace, the throne of mercy, for divine health and healing. And the publishing material, we want to commit them into the hand of the Lord. We want to ask the Lord to breathe upon those publicity material, that as the brethren, you know, hand them out to the people, on the streets, in their homes, everywhere, in the offices, in the school, that it will not just be thrown to the trash can. They, they, they will, you know, see and read what is written on it, and they will be impacted by what they read. The Lord will empower his word on those publicity material, and they will, you know, give them understanding and also put in their heart the days for this meeting, the hours for this meeting, and they will also prepare to receive from the Lord. I want to pray that the power of the Lord will be upon those publicity material. In Jesus' name we pray. I want to ask also that the Lord will strengthen his servant, our Aru, and the Lord will raise up laborers that will labor with him in God's vineyard concerning this great event. I want to pray that God will strengthen him. I want to pray that all that are going to partake in this great publicity, the blood of the Lord will cover them and no weapon fashioned by the enemy will prosper where they are. Father Lord, we commit your servant, our Aro, you are using for this great event. We pray that Lord, you will strengthen him, you will envision him, you will empower him, and you will raise up laborers that will be so minded with him, just like Paul on his own, a, 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 a one man squad, went from Philippi to Colossae and, you know, to all these places, discipling souls, publicizing himself, and you gave him laborers. And no wonder he was able to establish those churches in those 
regions. Lord, I pray, like you did it for Paul, do it for us in Jesus' name. And we pray that, Lord, in the day of the Lord, the people shall be willing, put a willingness in the heart of the brethren there to walk in unity with our pastor to mind the same thing for your kingdom, Lord. We pray that, Lord, as they publicize this great event, Lord, you will strengthen them. And Lord, you will also meet every one of them at their points of need, Lord. And that no one will hear about this program in Philippines that will not come, Lord. Every discouragement by the devil, every excuse by the devil, we counteract that right now in Jesus' name. We pray that, Lord, massively people will respond and massively you will save, you will deliver, you will heal, and you will succor and provide for all their needs in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, praise the Lord. If you believe God answers prayers, say pray, say a louder hallelujah. And Jesus, who is the way, he will make a way into the Philippines in Jesus' name. The word of God will penetrate every nook and cranny of the Philippines from north to south, from east to west, in Jesus' name. As our pastor here has said earlier, he said, in the day of his power, the people shall be willing. God will raise ministry helpers to our regional overseer over there, who will be willing to spread the gospel with him over there. And as they spread the gospel, there will be reception. There will be reception without opposition in the name of Jesus. And the word of God will penetrate into the heart of men and they will begin to respond to our calling to follow the Lord in Jesus name uh, we want to go into the next session and the person that will be helping us with this next session is our youth pastor here he will be leading us into empowerment for all the ministers they need the power of God we all know that the disciples of Christ have been following him for three years and that on several occasions, he sent them out. He will give them power to cast out devils. And but when he was leaving, he told them there is a greater assignment. He said, You have to tarry until you be enjoy power. We want to pray down the power of God upon the ministers of God. And this time around, there will be mighty manifestation of God's power through our original verse that is already there, through the general submission that will be visiting them, through every section of minister, every form of minister that will be ministering over there in Jesus' name. Send down your power. Send down your Holy Ghost, we say. Upon our ministers, we pray thee, O Lord. Send down thy power, we say, Amen. Amen. The Lord will send down his power in the mighty name of Jesus. Before we pray, we're going to be reading a few verses of the scriptures. You may sit a little while. Um, it was time for us to pray, then we can stand back up. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, I read verse 14. Wherefore, thus says the Lord, God of hosts, because you speak, because you speak this word, behold, I will make my, my words in thy mouth fire, and these people wood, and he shall devour them. God maketh his ministers a flame of fire. And we are believing God that those ministers that will be ministering alongside our general superintendent, the Lord will make them flames of fire to consume anything that represents the handiwork of the enemy. And those that are in bondage, in chains of darkness, the fire will consume those chains in the name of Jesus. Let's rise on our feet as we pray. We all know that God can use anything to work, but he prefers to use 
human beings. And so those human beings that he will be using at this crusade, we're going to pray for the power of God to come upon them. We're going to pray that God will clothe them with his power and make them vessels of honor, channels of blessings. That during this program, all the people that God will use, when we say ministers, not just the pastor of preaching, the ministers here includes the choir, the choristers, the ushers, people working in the sanitation, you know, it will get to the point that God can use anybody there. People coming in, they meet, the ushers will be directing them. The power of God can be transmitted to the ushers and then he hit those people. The choir, as they open their mouth to minister, the people that are already in bondage, you know, it gets to the point that even before the message begins, the choir ministration alone is enough to wet the ground and begin to loosen those that are in bondage. So let's lift up all the ministers before we take them section by section, commit every one of them into God's hands. Let's pray for the power of God to come down in a mighty way, in a different way through these ministers, to reach out unto all the people that will be present at that program. Let's pray, beginning with the ushers, because these are the first point of contact. These are the first people that those people will meet, maybe newcomers, people coming in, they will be the ones directing, they will be the ones helping to get things, I mean, sitting arrangements and other things. Let's pray for the ushers, that the power of God will begin with them, that the Lord will fill our ushers. You'll be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Remember, Philip was not a pastor among the disciples. He was just someone that was serving the table. But look at how God used Philip mightily. He was a man that was full of the Holy Ghost. And he was somebody that, look at all the, in the Acts of the Apostles, some portions of the Bible were dedicated to write and to comment something about the workings of that great man, Philip. Yet he was not an apostle. So let's pray that God will begin with the ushers. As people are coming in, they'll begin to feel the power of God through the ushers. As these people are coming in, that God will begin to walk through the ushers as they direct these people, that they will not be able, just like Stephen, that those evil spirits that we might want to penetrate through some evil people there will not be able to withstand the spirit with which those ushers will operate. Let's pray that they will be full of the power of the Holy Ghost, that God will use the ushers to direct people, that God will use the ushers to prepare these people to be able to get uh, prepared to receive their blessings. Let's pray again for the choir, the choristers, that as the choristers will be mounting the stage, we will see the glory of God. That the glory of God will cover that pulpit. The glory of God will cover the podium. The glory of God will cover the auditorium. As they open their mouth to minister to songs, that God will use those songs to minister to people and liberate those that are in bondage already and begin to heal the brokenhearted. That as those choir, the choristers begin to minister, will hear the ministration of angels as if angels are singing. Yes, they are angels. That the angels will hear the voice of angels as they begin to sing that the power of God will begin to begin to activate. That the power of God will begin to work before the man of God will mount the podium. That the, usher, the, the ministers, of the choristers as they minister, that God will use them. Use them mightily as they open their mouth to sing. The glory of God will cover the auditorium. The glory of God will cover the whole atmosphere. That the people there will begin to get their miracles. The people there, those sinners will begin to get convicted through the songs. Yes, people can get convicted through songs. As the Holy Ghost will begin to minister to them through the ministration of the choristers the power of God will be released and the whole atmosphere will be charged with the power of the Holy Ghost that people there nobody there will live without getting convicted those sinners that the Lord will minister to them through the ministration of the choristers in the mighty name of Jesus
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We're going to pray for our region overseer before we commit other ministers to God's hand. He is the point man that the Lord had placed in that land. We're going to pray that as the days go by and we approach the date draw nearer, that the Lord will put him at his personal best. He will be hale and hearty. There will be no story concerning him, any negative story, that the Lord will preserve him, preserve him mentally, preserve him physically, preserve him emotionally, preserve him in every area where he will be able to stand as a fit and a proper person. Let's pray as we commit him into the hands of God. Let's lift up the man of God into the hands of God, unto the throne of grace. Pray that the Lord will protect him, that the Lord will keep him. The Bible tells us about that. Remember the, the, the popular saying that smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. The enemy will always want to apply that strategy. Let's pray that every strike of the enemy will hit the wrong, the wrong targets. Let's pray that every bullet of the enemy, every arrow that the enemy will throw at him will miss, the, 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 will miss him and hit the wrong target. Let's pray that the Lord will preserve him, will shield him from every machination of the wicked one, every attack of the wicked one against him, against his ministry against all the plans as he's going around making plans and getting things together the enemy will not be able to take him down let's pray that he will be healthy during this crusade and after the crusade the lord will keep him he will be healthy he will be fit he will be in his proper state of mind that no negative thing will happen to him no negative thing will happen to his family as he's walking around in that town in that city in that country helping to get the ground wet helping to get things in order helping to put things in in their right perspective and, and in their right positions that the Lord will keep him all the wisdom he will need all the information he will need the Lord will make them available all the resources in terms of human resources in terms of I mean material resources everything it will be that he will need that the Lord will send helpers on his way the Lord will send benefactors or benefactors on his way the Lord will send destiny helpers on his way that he will not fail he will not falter he will not drop by the wayside the Lord will keep him the Lord will use him that this crusade that the Lord will use him in, in a very mighty way that after this crusade we will see the glory of God during this crusade we will see the glory of God let's pray that the Lord will make him more and more and more and more useful in the kingdom. The Lord will make him more and more powerful. The Lord will give him more grace. The Lord will give him more anointing. The Lord will give him more unction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray that every conspiracy of the devil against him will be scattered. Every, every ganging up, every kind of gangings, every kind of plans, evil plans of the enemy against him, the Lord was scattered in. The Lord was scattered in. The Bible said that surely they will gather, but because their gathering is not of the Lord, that they will be scattered for his sake. Every kind of conspiracy, every kind of evil ganging up against him, that the Lord was scattered in. The Lord will thwart every evil plan of the enemy against him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every stumbling block on his way, that God will turn them to a stepping stone in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. There was something we were told about the Philippines, a country that has, I don't know, I have to still confirm, um, about 2,000 islands. The network of roads there, throughout the hinterland and the other parts of the country, that they do more of traveling by sea, the, the shipping system and all that kind of maritime or marine type of movement, is what they rely on. Now, we want to begin to think the crusade, because of the terrain and the way the structure of that place, we don't want people to be hindered because of maybe transportation or whatever will make it possible for them to get there. The same thing too for the ministers. So there are some factors, now that's what we're trying to pray here, that might come, might be like a hindrance to the ministers for them to be able to be at their best to minister. 
We're going to pray that today, every kind of factor that will not be in the favor of those ministers, the Lord will remove from their ways. We're going to pray even for the, the members too who will be attending because the ministers will be there, they need to minister to people. So we'll pray as the ministers will, will be there, I believe God that they will come prepared. As they're coming there to minister, that all the people that they will minister to, the Lord will also bring them that the ministers will not be discouraged. So let's pray. Everything, anything that will bring discouragement, anything, everything that will bring a kind of layback, hindrance, obstruction on the way of these ministers, that the Lord will remove it. Let's pray. Those that will be coming from different directions, considering the type of, you know, transportation system over there, the, a land, a country that is scattered on islands, over 2,000 islands, all over the place, water here and there. And then we'll talk about the movement, uh, the Lord will help so that there will be, no matter the type of kind of natural things there will not be a, a hindrance or will not be pose a kind of restriction on their movement. The ministers will be there at the right time. There will be no obstruction. Whatever kind of obstruction or delay due to the transportation system, the Lord will give them the wisdom to navigate around the country or around the area where they will be having the, cru the crusade. Let's pray for these ministers that the Lord will, will help with them in the plannings, all the strategies that they will need. Our ministers, the choir, the, the ushers, the, the pastors, the, all, every one of them, that the strategies the Lord will give them. Give them wisdom, give them strategy that they will be able to deliver as the Lord had ordained them to do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's begin to thank God for answering our prayers. Let's begin to worship him. Let's begin to magnify him. Father, Lord, we thank you for this little short hour of prayer that was spent in thy presence praying for our ministers. And Lord, we believe, as you had promised us, that you make your ministers a flame of fire. We pray, Lord, that all the ministers that will, minist that will be ministering during this program, from the ushers to the sanitation workers, to the people in the prayer warrior section, and then the pastors that will preach on the podium, including the, the, the choristers, and everybody there, Lord, as all hands will be on deck to make this crusade a howling success, all your ministers. Father, we pray that you will make them a flame of fire that will consume all the heaps of the enemy in that land in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that you will use them as mighty, powerful men and women to break every yoke and every band of wickedness in, the lands, in, in that land and in the lives of your people. Thank you, Father, because we know you've answered us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And the Lord will honor our prayers in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, sir. All our ministers will be enveloped with power, power undeniable, power unconfrontable, power unresistible, power that is testifiable. And people will give glory to God as a result of the administration in Jesus' name. Whether they are choir, whether they are hushering, whether they are singing, whether they are ministering in one capacity or the other, there will be power flow from the pulpit. And through the power flow, people in the pew will be pulled from the pit of sin in Jesus' name. And through this global crusade at the Philippines, there will be a turnaround for, Philipp uh, for the gospel in the Philippines in Jesus' name. You know, we have prayed for, we have prayed for publicity materials, we have prayed about the power of God upon the ministers, and uh, now we want to pray for the salvation of souls. That's the primary purpose why Christ came to this world. I want to remind God what he said in Ezekiel 33 verse 11. He said, all souls are mine. He said, he has no pleasure in the death of the soul of the wicked. So we want to say, oh God, this is your word. There are people there that are that don't know they are left from their right with respect to relationship with God. We want to pray down the salvation of God. And that this through this global crusade, there will be massive salvation in Jesus' name. I pray there will be massive salvation in Jesus' name. So our brother, Brad Chris, will be helping us to take this uh, section as we sing this song. Um, Philippines shall be saved. And the Philippines shall be saved. The Holy Spirit we come down and the Philippines shall be one more time and the Philippines shall be saved and the Philippines shall be saved the Holy Spirit will come down 
and thy Philippines shall be saved. Amen. Now we have a very short time left for this prayer session. And so we are going to engage and uh, really pray. God, thank God for uh, the blessed assurance that Jesus answers prayers. And as we are going to open our mouth, God will hear us and he will do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 24, it says, Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captives delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives or the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. That's a promise, I will save thy children. And so we are going to commit these people as many as we hear the word of God, those that, we're going to be, that are going to be invited in the Philippines, as many as are going to, con to connect to different devices, even all over the world, we are going to pray salvation of souls. That's the purpose why Christ came, and that is the purpose why the program is being organized. Let us open our mouth and commit these words into the hands of God, commit the event into the hands of God, salvation of souls, souls will be saved in their number in the name of Jesus. Philippines must be saved. Commit them into the hands of God. The Philippines must be saved. Their number. Pray. Whatsoever is holding them captives, whatsoever principalities, powers, over you no know, rulers over those places, we are going to pray that they, that those uh, bondage of God will be broken. Those chains will be broken in the name of Jesus. They'll be set free. They will be saved in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. Now we are going to pray that those who we have saved before, but they've wandered away in darkness, we are going to pray that they will be restored. Those who are backsliding, they will be restored back to their faith in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we are not limiting our prayers to the Philippines alone. 
People are going to connect to this program all over the world. There are many who are just, just going to church because probably their families are going to church. Some are going to church because they are meeting their friends there. Some are, for one reason or the other, they are going to church, but they are not saved. They are going to pray that God will reach them, the gospel will reach them. And those who are backsliding in the families of the people of God, that all over the world, wherever they are, that the Spirit of God will find them, the Spirit of God will locate them, they must be saved. They cannot be, they cannot be free from, from the word of God, from the Spirit of God, that God will save them in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brother, we are going to pray for the last category of uh, people. We have prayed for uh, deliverance, for, sorry, for, for back restoration of uh, those who are vaccinated. We are now going to pray for the deliverance of the lawful captives. Those who the devil not have a right, or actually to say because of this, because of this, they are, they are his own property. We are going to pray that the power of God will work in their lives, will break every chain. God will deliver them. He says, I will save thy children. So let us pray that God will locate them. God will reach and deliver everyone that is bound of the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. In Jesus, then we pray. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you. We thank you, Lord, for this hour of prayer. Thank you, Jesus, because, Lord, we've opened our mouth, O oh God, my Father, and, Lord, we've asked, O oh God, Lord, of you, Jesus, Lord, of the salvation of souls, Lord, the deliverance, O oh God, of the captives, Father, in heaven, O oh God, for restoration, O oh God, of those who are backsliding. I pray, Father, as you have asked, O oh God, Jesus, do it, O oh God. Work out your wonders. Give us testimonies, O oh God, everywhere. In the name of Jesus, thank you because we know you've answered. For in Jesus' name we pray. Have your will, Lord. Have your will. Have your will, Lord. Have your will. Precious Redeemer, you declared unto us that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We prophesy into the land of the Philippines, from north to south, from east to west, during this section of the global crusade, have your way. Have your way. In the life of every participant that will be coming to that place, have your way. During that section, with respect to the economy of the nation, have your way. With respect to the, to the peace of the nation, have your way. In the name of Jesus, take control and let your name alone be exalted in Jesus' name. Glorify yourself, O God. And let there be a standing testimony as a result of this global crusade in the Philippines in Jesus' name. Thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to appreciate everybody in the sanctuary that have come, made the sacrifice to come here. I pray our sacrifice will not be in vain in Jesus' name. The psalmist says, he said, separate ye me on separate unto me those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Your sacrifice will not be in vain in Jesus' name. Uh, we want to transition into our Bible study straight away. I want to appeal to all our people that are on online.
please still hold on. Today is our Monday Bible study. So we'll just go straight into the choir rendition and the message for today. So please, uh, this prayer chain continues. We'll keep holding on, standing in the gap. about tomorrow and what the future holds your mind is filled with questions as you face the unknown you spent so
Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the teaching spirit that you have given us, the spirit of truth. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you teach us your word yourself and make it personal to everyone. And Lord, I pray you give us the wisdom for personal application of your word to our lives, our spiritual life, our family life, our Christian life, our professional life, every way, every area of our lives in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that the study of the word will profit everyone. Every member, every minister, every invitee, and everyone that will listen to the Bible study, even tonight in Jesus' name. Help us not to take your word for granted, not to come as usual and then just hear as usual and not make an impact in the life. We pray, Lord, that your word, every detail, everything you say will make impact transformational in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we come to our Bible study again. We appreciate those who are coming for the first time, and we appreciate those who have been coming every time. We're praying that the Word of God will bear fruit, much fruit, more fruit, and greater fruit in every life in Jesus' name. We are studying the epistle of James, general epistle to all the believers. Today, we're coming to study three. And we're looking at James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. James chapter 1, reading from verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. And then in verse 6, it tells us, but let him ask in faith, nothing of wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Those are the two verses we're looking at today. It's talking about wisdom. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. When we talk about wisdom, there is human wisdom. And if we have human wisdom, we can go far in the world, in the things we do, in the things we decide, and in the things we achieve, human wisdom. But it's not only human wisdom, there is devilish wisdom, horrific, terrible, or refined wisdom. That's the wisdom of the devil. And the Bible talks about that. Of course, we don't want that. And if that has been in our lives, we want to purge ourselves of every satanic and uh, horrible the wisdom so that we can have the, the wisdom of God. And then there is the spiritual wisdom. That is the wisdom that comes from the spirit of God. That's actually what the scripture here is talking about. If any of you lack the wisdom of the spirit if any of you lack the wisdom revealed in the scriptures if any of you lack spiritual scriptural wisdom let him ask of god and let him ask in faith when he asks nothing wavering because if he wavers if he doubts if he has some belief nothing he shall be given unto him we're talking tonight and preaching tonight and studying tonight on passionate importunate prayer for pure practical wisdom. In James chapter 3 verse 17, James 3 verse 17, it says, but the wisdom that is from above, that's the wisdom we're studying about tonight, the wisdom from above, the wisdom from the throne of God, the wisdom from the Spirit of God himself, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits and without partiality and without hypocrisy. It tells us about this supernatural wisdom, this spiritual wisdom, this wisdom from the Spirit of God. And it says the characteristic of that wisdom is that that wisdom is pure not impure. It doesn't lead us to impurity. It doesn't lead us to pollution. It doesn't lead us to evil. The Spirit of God leads us with the wisdom that is false, pure. And then it says, the wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom spiritual, the wisdom from the Spirit of God is peaceable. It doesn't lead us to be pugnacious or fighting or violence. Any wisdom that leads us to pollution, any wisdom that leads us to fighting and, you know, being pugnacious, is not 
not of God, it's of the devil. The wisdom um, that we are studying about and the wisdom we are praying about and the wisdom we want from above is pure, is peaceable, is gentle. The wisdom that comes from God so influences us and so impacts our lives, it makes us gentle. If we are aggressive, if we are boisterous, if we are destructive, and if we oppress other people, whatever wisdom we use to oppress other people, that's not wisdom from above. The wisdom from above and the wisdom the scripture says, which we pray for, is uh, first of all pure, is peaceable, is gentle, and is easy to be entreated. That is, as we interact together one with another, the wisdom we have is not the wisdom that never forgives, it's not the wisdom that punishes a neighbor for what he did in the past year, and we want to operate in the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God makes us to forget all the offenses of the past year, all the offenses of past life, and it makes us to be easily entreated. When somebody says, I'm sorry, can really, they will say that's all right, because we have the Spirit of God, and that Spirit gives us the wisdom that is easy to be entreated. In fact, this wisdom is full of mercy and good fruits. That's the kind of wisdom we want, and that's the kind of wisdom we're learning about in the scriptures. And it says it is impartial, without partiality. It's not selective in the application of the word of God to A or B or C, to the brother or to the sister. He is impartial, and the wisdom from above is without hypocrisy. That's the wisdom we do not have naturally. That's the wisdom we do not have humanly. That's the wisdom we do not have by either human education or human training. It takes the Spirit of God to bring that wisdom into our lives. And that's why we pray, and that's why we pray passionately, importunately, so that we can have this practical wisdom that comes from above. Once again tonight, passionate, importunate prayer for pure practical wisdom. We're looking at three things as we study tonight. Number one, perceiving the wisdom we all lack. The wisdom we all lack, you and I, there is a kind of wisdom we lack. And you and the people of the world, and even the people in the church, there's a kind of wisdom we all lack. And we perceive the wisdom we all lack. Number two is praying for wisdom from the Lord. The wisdom that comes from the Lord, not from the books of the world, not from the theater of the world, not from the activities of the world, and not from all the areas of the world. But this one comes from the Lord, praying for wisdom from the Lord. Number three, possessing his wisdom in our lives. It's something to study, and it's another thing to possess. It's something to know. It's another thing for us to operate and to lead and to lead our lives in the wisdom that he has given. Number three, possessing of his wisdom. We don't possess all his wisdom, but we possess the portion he gives us. We possess of his wisdom uh, in uh, our lives. Let's come to number one. Number one, uh, receiving the wisdom we all lack. And uh, we come to James again, chapter 1, verse 5. In James chapter 1, verse 5, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. It says we should ask for the wisdom, the wisdom which we lack. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, the wisdom of workmanship beyond natural wisdom. Number two, the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. Number three, the wealth of wisdom higher than the neighbor's wisdom. Look at number one. Number one is the wisdom for workmanship beyond natural wisdom. That's the kind of wisdom we have which is natural. Everyone has wisdom to do some specific things in life and it's natural. We're born with that and yet beyond that natural wisdom we need the wisdom for workmanship. 
We can do the work in the world. We can do everything we need to do in the world. After all, uh, the people who are not born again, the people who are not saved, the people who are not regenerated, the people whose lives and hearts have not been transformed. They do some kind of work. They are professionals who are not born again. There are, you know, literally many people who do not have the Spirit of God, and yet they do natural things, and they do that by natural wisdom. But we're called to a kind of work that is beyond the natural, a kind of work that is beyond the ordinary. And when God calls us to that, he has to give us the kind of wisdom for workmanship beyond our natural wisdom. He tells us in Exodus chapter 31, reading from verse 3, he says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Here is the work to be done in the tabernacle. Here is the work to be done amidst the commonwealth of Israel. Here is work to be done by the people of God for the worship of God. And yet God has to say, I've chosen him, I've appointed him, I've selected him and given him, number one, the spirit of God. And now he says in wisdom because of the work Workmanship of what he has to do. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says to devise cunning works, craft, and to work in gold and in silver and in brass. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, in the cutting of stones, the natural things that maybe other people can do, but he needed the wisdom of God to be able to do that cutting stones and having the iron bending and everything. God says, I want him to do it for me. And I want to give a specification from heaven. And I want him to do it according to all the specifications from heaven. And he needs supernatural wisdom. And it says in cabin of timber to work in all manner of workmanship. And that tells us then when God gives us work to do, what we do is not going to be in the natural wisdom of the world. In the natural wisdom we are born with, but in the wisdom of the Spirit of God that he grants unto us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, reading here from from verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Here Paul the apostle says he is not cutting stone, he's not a bending iron, he's not carving wood, he's preaching, he's declaring the mind of God and preaching the gospel, he's declaring the word of salvation and the wonder of sanctification and readiness for the coming of the Lord. And he does that not in his natural natural wisdom, the ability, natural ability to teach and natural ability to put things together and interpret. It says no, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Uh, look, at, uh, verse, um, uh, look at verse 8 there. In verse 8 it says, which none of the princes of the world knew. That is this wisdom, the wisdom from above. The princes of the world, they don't know about this wisdom for a they know not it. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. There is wisdom then that comes from above for workmanship and the watchmen of the Lord and the workmen of the Lord and the preachers of the gospel. We cannot just come in a natural wisdom with our natural intelligence and say, I can do it this way and that way. No, I'm a teacher in the world so I can come in the church and teach. No, I'm a preacher, I'm a public speaker in the world. And because of the wisdom I've gathered as a teacher, public speaker in the world, then I can come to the ministry and demonstrate the same. It says, no, the wisdom we have for workmanship in the house of God. The wisdom we have for dividing the word of truth and bringing sinners to salvation, it says it's not the wisdom which the princes of this world, which they have, will speak wisdom from above. Come to number two here. Number two is the weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. The weapon of wisdom above native wisdom. We're coming to 1 Kings chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 6. 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 6 do therefore according to thy wisdom and let not his forehead go down to the grave in peace here David was talking to Solomon and understand Solomon 
had not yet received the other kind of wisdom, the supernatural wisdom, which he prayed for later. But at this time now, before that prayer for the wisdom, he already possessed some wisdom. And David said to him, do thou therefore according to thy wisdom according to the wisdom native wisdom and maybe you have that native wisdom maybe you have the human wisdom but you can still pray for something higher something greater that comes from God look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says now therefore hold him not guiltless for thou art a wise man and knoweth what thou oughtest to do unto him a but is our head bring thou down to the grave with blood here again David was still talking to Solomon about another man and he says <laughs> Solomon uh, you see this man offended me and offended the kingdom and I couldn't handle it because I, I was afraid of them these sons of Zeruiah are too hard for me I couldn't deal with them but Solomon deal with them according to thy wisdom native wisdom to handle other people, to subdue them, to subject them, to oppress them, to take away anything they have and to stop them from living. He says, Solomon, you have the wisdom, native wisdom. What kind of wisdom do we have that can oppress other people, judge other people, clamp down on other people, destroy the progress of other people, even, even make their lives so delicate and so tough that they don't want to live anymore? There is native wisdom that people have, but there's something greater than native wisdom. And Solomon knew that. That's why in chapter 3, chapter 3, we're reading from verse 5. He tells us, in Gibeah, the Lord of appear to Solomon in a dream by night and God said ask what I shall give thee look at verse 6 in verse 6 it says and Solomon said thou hast showed unto thy servant David my father great mercy great favor according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee and thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day look at verse 7 in verse 7 it says and now O Lord my God thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father and I am but a little child I know not to go out or to come in. Remember, he had native wisdom. He had wisdom he was born with. He had wisdom he acquired by human education. And yet he said, I come to a position. I come to a place. I need to lead the people of God and to lead them. This is spiritual matter. I do not know to go out or come in in this spiritual situation. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad, for who is able to judge this so great thy people. He needed wisdom from above. That's what the scripture is, is saying. Whatever wisdom we think we've got, and we've got some wisdom, otherwise we'll not be where we are today in profession, 